Yesterday, we saw the tweet Joe Biden sent out. Yes, the very tweet indicating that the president of the United States is too senile to run for president, but not to drop out. It makes no sense at all. But that's what happens when an unorganized presidency asks an unorganized campaign to rush and mush together a statement. Pathetic. With that being said, we're going to be digging into Joe Biden's catastrophe as president, catastrophe of a withdrawal from the presidency, and what all of the other major Democrats take away from this, plus a special libs of TikTok edition freakout from a left-wing person on TikTok. With that being said, let's dig in. Facts over facts over tracks is a mess, spitting slow, spitting fast, like a roast, like a gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. So without further ado, let's just dig into everything that we need to know about Joe Biden dropping out of the race. Joe Biden merely just dropped out of the race. He's not dropping out of the presidency. Um, he might get 25th Amendment. Amendment did. Um, but the thing is, as for right now, he just dropped out of the race. Um, he's saying that it's better for his party, stuff like that. We're going to read the statement here. So, President Joe Biden announced on Sunday that he will not seek re-election in November, bowing in pressure from high-ranking Democrats and media figures who, fig who fear that they will not be able to defeat former President Donald Trump. In a letter addressed to the public, Biden said that while it was in his intention to run for re-election, quote, I believe that it isn't in the best interest of my party and my country for me to stand down and focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. Biden has faced pressure to bow out of the race since his disastrous debate performance in June, which even his allies say that raised serious concerns about whether his ability to dischange, discharge the duty of the office. Biden's decision to drop out of the race after CNN reported that Biden had softened his stance toward the idea of resisting calls to even consider it. Quote, he's being receptive, not as defiant as he is publicly, a source told CNN. He's gone from saying Kamala can't win to do you think Kamala can win? It's still unclear where he's going to land, but seems to be listening. CNN's report followed an interview that Biden did with BET, which is BET, in which he said that he would be open to the idea of stepping down if he was diagnosed with a medical condition. Hours after the interview was released, Biden was diagnosed with COVID and withdrew from the campaign trail. The 81-year-old president has struggled in the weeks following the first presidential debate in quiet voices within his party, who is pushing for his ouster as they worry he will drag down the Democratic candidates across the country. That's exactly why I was saying Joe Biden should stay in the race. I was 100% saying, listen, Joe Biden, don't listen to your party, just stay in the race. But of course, he's going to listen to his party. Um, now we're going to get, um, we're going to get crackling Kamala Harris, sadly. I really don't think that Kamala Harris can do any but better um, in the polls because she actually got zero delegates in 2020 when she was herself running for president of America. So this is just another campaign that's going to fail on the Democratic side, hopefully. But now I think that now when a lot of more people actually know who Kamala Harris actually is, the story needs to switch from Joe Biden to Kamala Harris. But more broadly, the story needs to switch from individual candidates to the Democratic Party in general. Because Joe Biden is not only the person that pushes these policies, it's the Democratic it's the Democratic Party altogether. The Democratic Party wants to ruin the country. It's not just Joe Biden that failed us on the federal side. No, it's also Gavin Newsom and the Democratic governor of California that failed Californians. It's also the Colorado governor that said Feliz Navidad is a in a in a very, very cringy Christmas video that he released during Christmas time. We reacted to it. It's a failure of a governorship. Lost all respect for him. We have multiple governors throughout the whole entire United States since failing us as a country. We have the California we have a Massachusetts governor, Governor Maura Healy, that's just c destroying Massachusetts once and for all. I mean, it's just putting Massachusetts out of its misery because it was already dying. So now it's just putting Massachusetts out of its misery by banning weapons that don't need to be banned, that are perfectly safe, but just because of the fact that one 
psychopath used that specific gun, then we need to ban it altogether. It's just stupid. So all of these democratic policies in general are to blame. It's not an individual. It's a policy. It's the whole entire Democratic Party in general that Republicans should be attacking. Not just a single candidate, not just a single person, but policies more broadly. Because of the Democratic policy on the, on the foreign policy at stance, um, we have seen the catastrophe withdrawal of Afghanistan. We have seen the total collapse of, of Afghanistan because of that reason. But then we have also saw the invasion of Ukraine because of the Democrats. It's not just because of Joe Biden, it's because of the Democrats going easy on foreign policy. We have seen gas prices raised to astronomical highs because of the fact that Saudi Arabia is no longer that friendly with us because Joe Biden wants to ruin our relationship with them. We also have seen in, in Israel, Israel being attacked by, by Hamas and more broadly, Iran, which Joe Biden gave Iran billions of dollars worth of funds that were f formerly frozen. So again, Joe Biden is not just to blame for this. It's the Democratic Party in general that wants to ruin our country. That's who's to blame here. Nobody else but the Democratic Party because the Democratic Party agrees with what Joe Biden does. That's exactly what the thing is here. First Lady Jail Biden and, Pre and Biden's unconvicted felon crack cocaine addict Hunter Biden has reportedly taken more control over the presidency since the debate, believing that some of in the White House cannot be trusted and are sabotaging him. Hunter Biden has effectively become Biden's gatekeeper and controls who gets to see his father. Some of the Biden's aides were reportedly beating the poop out of him in beating the poop out of any Democrat member who raises questions about Biden's mental fitness for office. During the first major interview following the debate, Biden refused to commit to taking a neurological exam when pressed by ABC News host George Stepanolovus. <laughs> um, when asked if he would consider dropping out, Biden responded, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came down and said, Joe, get out of the race, I'd get out of the race. The Lord Almighty not Almighty the Lord Almighty's not coming down. So that's what Joe Biden said. But like I said at the time, your Lord Almighty is not the same as everybody else's Lord Almighty. So your Lord Almighty is just Obama. So first of all, I mean let's get that very straight here. Step on all of us then asked on the street following the interview if Biden should step down, and he responded, I don't think that he can serve four more years. The White House confirmed earlier this month that Biden has been evacuated, um, evaluated, I mean, by a Parkinson's disease expert during his, phys his yearly physical exams after numerous doctor doctors stated publicly that they believe Biden has a disease. Um, during another major interview, Biden reportedly exploded at an NBC News Lester Holt for asking him basic questions about his fitness, declaring, quote, I have to command my... Of I have command of my facilities. In an interview with 360 with Speedy, Biden said that Obama asked him to be vice president in 2020 when Trump was in office, which makes no sense whatsoever. Biden said, but I don't plan on running because when I, in 2020, when I was, when I, my, when Barack asked me to be vice president, I, uh, I, I joined him. When was a, which was a great honor and, uh, but, after that, I became a professor at the University of Pennsylvania, which does not make any sense whatsoever. Obama tapped Biden for the vice presidency in 2008, and Biden served two terms, leaving office in January of 2017. Dr. Tim Pitts, a Democrat who is a quadruple board-certified neurologist based in New York City, told, that, told NBC News during a television interview that it was obvious to him that Biden had the Parkinson's disease. Quote, you notice when he turns, it's kind of end-blocking turning. It's not a quick turn, Pitt said. That's one of the hallmarks of Parkinson's. It's widgety and gritty, slow motion. And he has that hallmark, especially with the low voice. They said what was a cold. His hypophonia, small minor 
monotone voice like this over time is a hallmark of Parkinson's. Shuffling giant we call that. Little steps, he noted. Loss of arm swinging from rigidity. When we walk, we have a nice condon. He doesn't. He doesn't really swing his arms and ends blocking turning, meaning he kind of pivots around his foot. I could diagnose him from across the mall. We all remember that interview. We reacted to it um, on the show. But the thing is, at the end of the day here, we could have we could have saw this coming from a mile away. As soon as the debate, the horrible debate performance took place, we all saw exactly what was going to happen. We saw it for the weeks and weeks coming out of the debate, the whole entire Democratic Party just gave up on Joe Biden because the media was hiding Joe Biden's seniority for all of his presidency. And then now all of a sudden Joe Biden pants the media for lying to its viewers. Now the media is mad at Joe Biden. That's exactly why Joe Biden was ousted by his party because of the fact that during the debate, the media was pretending as though Joe Biden was with it in, in quick witted and stuff like that. But in reality, he really wasn't. He was in reality just a senile old man. Um, just according to the White House doctor, the same exact the same exact situation has unfolded there. So it's a very sad situation that we have the president of America being senile and then not being able to serve as pre as um, a new nominee for president in November, but then a mere, what, four months before him running for president, he can still do the job. I think that he should just step down as president. Let's see Kamala Harris become president real quick, and that will make sure that she loses in November because of the fact that they will see how stupid Kamala Harris actually is and not quick with it and how much she will actually destroy so let's just say that we put up with this for, so now it's July. So we put up with this August, September, October, November. We put up with this for four months and then we vote on inside of November and then we put up with it for another two months. So half a year of Kamala Harris's presidency instead of four years of potential Kamala Harris presidency. I say six months, okay? That's what I definitely say here because it's very... um it's not going to be a good site whatsoever. And like I said, news is breaking out by the second. So it's very, very fast pace over here. And there's a lot of things breaking all at once. So we also have Biden's aides fall, finding out that Joe Biden dropped out of the race on Twitter. So yes, of course, um, Biden's aides did not have any clarification on whether or not Joe Biden was going to step out of the race. All that they got was a post that he posted for everybody else to know that he was dropping out of the race. So that's a little bit crazy here because for me, I would think that if you are dropping out of the race, then you would at least tell your aides that you will be releasing a statement so they can all be ready because mere hours before him dropping out, they're all defending him, they're posting stuff about him, and then all of a sudden, boom, he drops out of the race. So it's like, it was very unorganized. It was like, a, oh, let me see your phone, Joe Biden. I'm just going to check the time. And then they tweet something from his phone. <laughs> That's what it kind of feels like here. White House in campaign aides to President Joe Biden reportedly found out that he was ending his re-election bid on social media platform X. Democrat familiar with the situation told Politico, we're all finding out by tweets. The person added, none of us understand what's happening. Biden, 81, had publicly insisted that he is not going to be dropping out of the race, even as Democrats increasingly pressured him to step aside after his fumbling debate performance late last month. World's unease about his apparent decline in electability. Then, on Sunday, Biden announced that he, will be, he would be stopping his 2024 campaign to focus on the remainder of his term and later said that he was endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris to become the Democratic Party's a president nominee. Harris later said that she intended to win the nomination. Politico noted a sign of abruptness, I should say, was the Biden campaign sent out a fundraising email about Joe and Kamala just eight minutes after Biden shared his decision to bow out. This is what I'm saying. It was so unorganized and so abrupt that the campaign is still actively fundraising for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and people donated to that very email. People are saying $10,000 here, $5,000 the year. And then all of a sudden, boom, they get an email saying that Joe Biden stepped out of the race mere minutes prior to them donating. So they didn't even know about it yet. So that's just crazy. New York Times reporter 
Kenneth Vogel shared on X some information to give a sense of how much Biden's decision took his campaign by surprise on Sunday. Campaign staff were still calling delegates 30 minutes before his announcement, pushing them to declare their support for Biden in the roll call on, and on social media, according to one delegate he wrote in a post. To give a sense of how much how his okay, this is from Kenneth T. Vogel on X. To give a sense of how much Biden's decision took his campaign by surprise, campaign staff were still calling delegates 30 minutes before the announcement, pushing them to declare, like I just said. Um, Nick Kohling, the delegate who received the call 30 minutes before the announcement, says that a Biden staffer pushed them to commit to support in the Biden in the roll call vote in posts on social media. They refused to commit. I'm absolutely bonkers, they said. Nick Colling, an Idaho graduate student, said a campaign staffer called at 1.12 p.m. asking, can Biden count on you? Gojing added, it's absolutely bonkers. And they also got a fundraising email eight minutes before. Folks, we have to be up front. We're reaching out right now not to ask for money, but for your endorsement. Last week, Donald Trump and his quote-unquote MAGA cronies end of quote, spent every minute of the Republican nomination convention touting an extreme out-of-touch Project 2025 agenda, which is just not true because Trump did not talk about Project 2025 one time. Meanwhile, Joe and Kamala are leading the country with courage and decency, blah, 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 blah. And then that's why they are asking for money. Will you sign this? Will you sign on right now to endorse President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's one, first 100 days? It's just stupid. Yeah, so, I mean, of course, this is this is taking the campaign by surprise because of the fact that the campaign is very unorganized anyway. So, of course, it's going to be taken by surprise because the candidacy is is out of touch. It's very, very um, messy. It's not organized. It's it's um, failing. Of course, it's going to be a catastrophe of a withdrawal here. Every single withdrawal Joe Biden has is just a catastrophe. It really is. So, um, this is a this is Kamala Harris's statement on um on the matter here. On behalf of the American people, I thank Joe Biden for his extraordinary leadership as president of the United States and for his decades of service to this country. I am honored to have the president's endorsement and my intention is to earn and win the nomination. I will do everything in my power to unite the Democratic Party and unite our nation to defeat Donald Trump in his extreme Project 2025 agenda. If you're with me, add a donation right now. Yeah, that's just stupid. So now at the same exact time, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, I would say even before this point, I would say as soon as 2025 agenda got published, they use this 2025 agenda to attack Trump, even though Trump said that he has no idea what 2025 even is. It's a 900 page personnel project for what people should line up for the government when Joe, when Trump gets elected here or if Trump gets elected here. So now at the same exact time, Trump said, no, listen, I did not read that. I don't know what's in that. And then now the Republicans are saying, OK, well, I like 2025. I like 2025. I like the agenda that they have and I like the Heritage Foundation, which is the Heritage Foundation is the person that actually created this or the group of people that actually created this. So now they're attacking Trump on Project 2025 when Trump said himself that he does not even know what Project 2025 is. It's just stupid. Talking about stupidity, we have Bill Clinton and um, Hillary Clinton's statement on this situation. Statement from President Clinton and Secretary Clinton. President Biden has capped his extraordinary career of service with the presidency that has lifted America out of their unprecedented pandemic. Not true. Created millions of new jobs. Not true. Rebuilt a battered economy. Not true. Strengthened our democracy. Uh, not true. And restored our standing in the world. Also not true. By any measure, he has advanced our founder's change to build a more pr perfect union in his own stated goal of restoring the soul of our nation. Very not true. We join millions of Americans in thanking President Joe Biden for all of that he has accomplished, standing up for Americans time again and again. With his North Star always being what's best for the country, not true. We are honored to join President and the President and endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris and will do whatever we can to support her. We've looked throughout many ups and downs, but nothing has made us more worried for our country than the threat passed by second Trump term. 
Um, he has promised to be a dictator on day one, which is just a joke that he said. And his recent ruling on the servial Supreme Court and will only embroider, embroider him to further shred the Constitution. That's not true. Because just because of the fact that the Supreme Court rules something does not mean that it is specifically in the Constitution. It means that the Supreme Court rules what is um what is in the laws, not just in the Constitution, but more broadly in the laws. And then it actually just says and interprets the laws that we already have in the books here, not just the Constitution, but laws broadly. So if we need more and under more of an understanding on how to interpret the laws, we look to the Supreme Court. So that just does not make any sense here. Of course, when you have somebody that's more based in reality, they don't know how to act because now reality hits them in the face and clocks them at 50 miles per hour. Um, so now it's time to support Kamala Harris and fight for everything that we've got to elect her America's future depend on it, which is just very stupid here because, of course, um, Kamala Harris is not going to fix anything. She's only going to break it even more because now all the failures that... Tr um, that Joe Biden had, Kamala Harris is also responsible, just like how Kamala Harris still, till today, never went to the border. She owns that border. Now, this is Chuck Schumer's statement. Joe Biden has not only been a great president and a great legislative leader, but also a truly amazing human being. His decision, of the course, was not easy, but he once again put his country, his party, and our future first. Joe today shows that he is a true patriot and a great American. Yeah, why? Because he stepped out. He's a great American because he stepped out of the race and he made room for other people. Yeah, of course. That's exactly what I'm thinking too, Chuck Schumer. Um, next is um, the Obama's statement on the matter here. Um, Joe Biden has been one of America's most consequential presidents as well as a dear friend and partner to me. Today, we have been reminded again that he's a patriot of the highest order. 16 years ago, yada, 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 yada. Since president, since taking office, President Joe Biden has displayed the character gain in again, again, and again. He helped end the pandemic, created millions of jobs, lowered the cost of prescription drugs, not true, passed the first major piece of gun safety legislation in 30 years, so it locked down on the constitutional rights that they just want to um, support for some reason. So you think that Trump is taking away our constitutional rights, but then you ban our Second Amendment rights. Okay. Um, Past the first major. Okay, so I just read that made the highest investment to address climate change in history. Um, okay, so yeah. So with climate change, people are saying that our days are getting longer. So we gain one second of time in every 100,000 years, give or take. So now in 100,000 years, we will have one more second of the day. So 24 hours in one second. And that's what you're worried about. It's just stupid. Intentionally, he restored America's standing in the world, revitalized NATO. No, he, no, he did not. And mobilized the world to stand up against Russian aggression in Ukraine. You do realize that Russia is still invading Ukraine, right? And you do also realize that Ukraine is still waiting for military, um, military inventory in in and, mute, and um, missiles from NATO, right? So what's going on there? If you think that NATO is so strong, why is NATO taking so long to give aid to Ukraine? Also, the same exact situation is happening with, with Israel being attacked by Hamas and Iran, which Iran is a, is a enemy of the United States, just like how Russia is. Does not make much sense here. More than that, President Joe Biden pointed us away from the four years of chaos, falsehood, and division that has categorized Donald Trump's administration. That's not true because Joe Biden has devised this country, but never mind that. Obama, you're the one that has divided this country. Nobody divided this country more than Obama's terms. Um, through his policies and his example, Joe has reminded us of not of who we are at best, a country committed to old-fashioned values like trust and honesty. Oh, old-fashioned values. You cannot talk about old-fashioned values if you don't even support the fundamental bedrock of marriage. Does not even make much sense at all.
A country that believes in democracy, rule of law, and accountability. A country that insists that everyone, no matter who they are, has a voice and deserves to a choice at, chance at a better life. Um, yada, yada, yada. For now, Michelle and I want to express our love and gratitude for Joe and Jill for leading us so evilly and care courageously during this prolarious time and for their commitment to the ideals of freedom and equality that this country was founded on. Yeah, very stupid stuff here. Obviously, not true whatsoever. Um, they are not going to sit here and talk about the foundation of America because the foundation, the founders of America will laugh at the um at where our country actually is today. It's a sad reality. And then we go to the people's reaction here. A very stupid situation. We see this from libs of TikTok here. We see a grown man just crying because Joe Biden has dropped out of the race. A very a very um laughable moment, I I say for sure. So that's the democratic side. This is the actual people side here. Of course, the people always have their their stupid reactions and they always post them on TikTok. Here it is. It's just such a fake cry. Obviously, no real tears have ever came in out. He's just hitting himself. He's about to pull out his hair. His phone's just falling over. It's just crazy. Gen Z, we need to band together. <laughs> he was for Gen Z's first president. <laughs> yeah, it's just absolutely crazy here. Um, I just don't know why um, people are this crazy. And this is the people that like Joe Biden. These are the people that actually like the Democrats. So pick your poison, everybody. Um, and now we see Kamala Harris, which is now the front runner for the presidency. We can see that about a year ago, she has came out in front of everyone and said that she was wearing a blue dress and she was sitting at a table. I guess for deaf people. And then um, everybody started introducing yeah. themselves as well. Thank you, Ravini, and thank you, Madam Vice President. My, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a white woman with long brown hair. I'm wearing red, um, a red dress, and I'm wearing a see-through mask so you can see my red lips. Because nobody actually asked you to describe yourself. Nobody that is actually blind wants you to describe themselves. Nobody wants to, you to describe yourself whatsoever. Nobody actually cares. Um, and, and this is exactly who our next president can very much well be. So that's just a sad, sad time. Um, obviously, Kamala Harris is, very, is the laughing stock of the world now. We can see her um, in her Venn diagram addiction, and we can see her in her electric school bus addiction, and we can see her in her Venn diagram addiction. Many, many times that she came out and said that she loves Venn diagrams so very much. So disgraceful. It really is. I have no other, I have no other way of actually explaining this other than just very disgraceful stuff here. With that being said, we're going to sum up this episode here. If you did like this episode and you do want to see more, like and subscribe down below because I do have new episodes of my show every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.